गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद चैप्टर नंबर थर्टीन दैट इज अर्थ मूवमेंट एंड चेंजिंग लैंडफॉर्म सो वी हैव रेड टेल फोल्डिंग एंड वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद फॉल्टिंग एंड द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फॉल्टिंग ओके न वॉट इज अ फॉल्टिंग वेन प्लेट्स मूव समाइम स्ट्रेस कॉज फिशर्स एंड फ्रैक्चर्स ओके वेन सम यू नो द प्लेट्स आर डिसप्लेस दैट इज कॉल्ड एज फॉल्टिंग यू विल अंडरस्टैंड इट बेटर वेन यू विल you know uh, see all these uh, photos over here the first is the types of faulting in first is normal faulting now what is normal faulting it is nothing but you know you can see in this photo that there are two kind two plates are over there this one plate is hanging towards it this is called as a hanging plate okay now this sometimes whenever there is a kind of a you know movement inside inside the earth's crust then what happen is that this plate will go down this plate will go down okay and that is called as a normal faulting you can move it here you can see over here that move down okay so this you know a uh, plate which is hanging plate will move down and the kind of a rift which will you know occur over here that is called as normal fault then we have reverse faulting in this uh, picture you can see that there are two plates okay and this one is a hanging plate and sometimes what happens due to certain movements this plates you know rises upwards and the kind of a gap which is created that is called as you know the terrace kind of which is created that is called as reverse faulting the third is the tear fault what is a tear fault when both the plates are moving in the opposite direction this plate is moving this side and this plate is moving that side okay means they are scraping to each other so that kind of fault which is created that is called as tear fault okay <clears throat> then we are going to understand that what is block mountains and rift valleys okay narmada is an example narmada river is flowing from east to west and when it reaches the western coastal plain then it you know comes from a rift valley now how this rift valley has developed that is the question so what happen is sometime there is a plain area and when due to the sudden movement of uh, sudden movement of the plates some of the plates you know rises upwards okay and this this area will rise upward and it creates a kind of a mountain another um, kind of a scenario is one in which there is a plain area and sometime you know this plain area which is above some plate this plate will go down and certain kind of gaps are created okay so this is called as you know uh, block mountains and this kind of gap which has been created this is called as rift and it is also called as rift valley now this will take a shape of a mountain and the gap between them which is a valley will be called as a rift valley okay you can see in this scenario you know this plate has moved upwards and it has created a block mountain in this what is happening that this plate is moving downward okay and you know this area looks like a mountain and this is called as a rift and this gap is called as a rift valley okay so these are block mountains and rift valleys then we are going to understand about the sudden earth movement okay so previously uh, till a block mountains we have understood that what is the you know uh, small movements now what is called as a you know sudden movement so whenever sudden movements are happening then two things occur whether it is a earthquake or a volcano okay now what is a earthquake earthquake is you know when inside the earth's crust when the two plates are there and one plate you know they are colliding towards each other or they are scraping towards each other okay that is the reason behind an earthquake okay so the point inside the earth where the earthquake is happening that is called as focus okay and the area above it where the maximum damage will happen that will be called as epicenter okay that will be called as epicenter okay so this is called as earthquake okay now seismology is the study of earthquake waves and the scientists who study them are known as seismologists okay so and how do we measure an earthquake that whether uh, that what is the frequency of the earthquake that will happen with the help of a richter scale 
एंड यू नो इफ द अर्थ को एक मेजर सिक्स और अब सिक्स देन इट कॉज द मैक्सिम डैमेज इफ द अर्थ को एक इज बिलो सिक्स देन इट विल नॉट कॉज एज डैमेज ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द अर्थ को एक यू कैन सी दैट दिस पॉइंट बिनीथ द अर्थ सर्फेस इन द क्रस्ट इज कॉल्ड एज फोकस एंड दिस पॉइंट अबाउ on the surface of the earth where you know the you can feel the tremors or the, of the earthquake that will be called as the epicenter okay these tremors are called as seismic waves and after earthquake you can see this case study about an uh, nepal earthquake and then we are going to understand volcanoes okay now what is the reason behind volcanoes whenever there are two kinds of plates and one plate goes deep inside it okay you know it is going deep inside it then what happen a kind of pressure is happening and this pressure results in opening of a vent vent is like a pipe you know you can see that this is a vent this is a you know wet vent goes deep inside the earth's crust and you know the magma come out you know the magma is coming out this is the reason behind a volcano okay so whenever this is a kind of opening is there when the lava is coming from the vent then you can see that uh, various kind of hot magma volcanic ash and steam and rock particles and gases will also come with it okay so this is a volcano in pacific ocean you know on the right hand side of the north america and south america you can see the pacific ring of fire now what is pacific ring of fire it is a kind of a you know black kind of a ring around which there are so many active volcanoes are there which keeps on erupting and it has formed a black layer over like this in a form of a circle this is called as pacific ring of fire okay now there are three kinds of volcanoes active dormant and extinct okay now active volcano the one which we have in india okay that is on the barren island is an example active volcano is one which erupts frequently okay and which always shows the signs of instability that is called as active volcano then we have dormant volcano dormant volcanoes are those which have erupted in the historical time but have not erupted in the recent times okay it's been a long time which they have erupted so they are called as dormant or sleeping volcanoes then we have extinct volcanoes extinct volcanoes are those which has certain kind of seismic waves and which have the probability of you know erupting in the future but but which has never been erupted till now okay they have never been erupted but they have certain kind of frequency or all the kind of features of being erupted in the future so that is called as extinct volcanoes okay so by volcanoes you know we have completed the endogenic forces and endogenic movements and in the next class we are going to read about the exogenic forces okay and how, what kind of landforms are created by the external factors okay thank you so much